All right, this is chapter four, section two, number 75. They want us to use a second derivative test to determine relative max and relative mins. So honestly, this is not used too often on a calculus AB exam. It could occur and it's, there are times where it's nice to use it, but in calculus BC, there are times where you can only use the second derivative test. Um, second derivative test is nice when you already have the second derivative given to you and it's easy to use, but if you have to still calculate it, the first derivative test is probably better. So you need to know both. We have a function. I will explain how it works again, the second derivative test. Well, clearly, if you're doing the second derivative test, you probably need the second derivative. So let's find the first derivative. This is a product. I have two things being multiplied. So I leave the first alone times the derivative of the second, plus I, leave, I take the derivative of the first and leave the second alone. Now you notice they both have a common factor of e to the x. Always factor out your common factor. I'm left with one plus x minus seven, which gives me e to the x, x minus six, if you combine like terms. Now I need to take the derivative again, f double prime of x, product rule again, leave the first alone times the derivative of the second, plus take the derivative of the first and leave the second alone. I again factor out the common factor of e to the x because they both have one. And I'm left with one plus, whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on? Where'd that come from? Yeah, much better. X minus six. And I combine like terms and I get X minus five. And that's the second derivative. All right, what are we trying to find? We're trying to find relative maxes and relative mins. So here is a concept that you need to know, especially if you happen to have a quiz coming up soon. If you have a relative max, what are the characteristics at that point? The first thing that's true is the first derivative is zero. The second thing, this is concave down, so the second derivative must be negative. So if those two conditions exist at a point, you're gonna have relative max. Again, you don't have to memorize this. Concave down, critical point, hey, relative max. Derivative zero, second derivative negative. Now, how do you get a relative min? Well, what are the characteristics there? The slope of the tangent line is zero, but this is concave up, meaning the second derivative is positive. So if you find a single point where the derivative is zero and the second derivative is positive, that point must be a relative min. So that's the process we wanna go through. So the first step is finding where the derivative is zero. And then after that, we can go to the second derivative. So here's our first derivative right here. I'm gonna set that equal to zero. Now, a lot of people freak out. I don't know when that equals zero. That's hard, I need a calculator. No, you don't. Because you all know the graph of e to the x. You all know it looks like this. And in order for a function to be zero, it has to touch the x-axis. That's when it equals zero. But since this never touches the x-axis, that has no solution. Never equals zero. Then we add six to both sides. So we have one place where the slope of the tangent line is zero. It could be a relative max, could be a relative min. To test it, we need to find the second derivative. So the next step is to say, hey, what's the second derivative at six? e to the six, six minus five. Clearly that's positive. So we have a second derivative that's positive 
and the first derivative that's zero, what does that give us? A rel min. So now your justification would be f has a, why did I put a period there? I don't know. A relative minimum at x equals 6. Why? You need justification. Because f prime of 6 is 0 and f double prime at 6 is positive. Done. That is using the second derivative test to find relative maxes and relative